Hi, my name is Daniel Hodges, and if my math is correct, I have slept a total of 57,000 hours during my time here on Earth, my complete lifespan. Feeling tired is normal. I sleep a lot. I feel tired all the time, but there's a difference between tired and exhaustion. Being exhausted can be extremely dangerous, but fortunately, there is something that can help. According to Roland Jade, humans sleep anywhere from 6.25 hours to 8 hours nightly on average. Now, I wake up at 3.50 a.m. every morning to get ready for work. This is five days a week, sometimes six if I work a weekend. I'm not sure how I get out of bed. Some days I do and some days I don't. Sometimes I have the energy and I pop right out and I'm ready to go take on the day. And other days, it takes a lot, multiple alarms to get me out of bed. Um, when I'm in this state of exhaustion on the days that I have trouble getting up, I feel as if my mental state is cloudy or foggy, like I have a glaze over my eyes. I see and perceive the world differently and slower than my physical posture. Instead of standing upright, keeping everything nice, I become lazy, I become slouched. This opens up a lot of opportunities for injury, especially in my line of work. See, I build fire trucks, so I'm moving big, heavy sheets of metal and steel parts all day long. And when my posture and my mental clarity are both out of line, again, there's an opportunity for injury, lacerations, concussions, or even death. Now, doctors recommend that you get anywhere from seven to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep nightly. But I challenge this saying that people have very limited knowledge and do not fully understand why we sleep, how we sleep, how we cycle through sleep, and what sleep really truly does for the body and for the brain. According to Slashdot, there are two different types of sleeping cycles. One is going to be non-rapid eye movement or non-REM. This is stage one, two, and three. One, two, and three all last for different periods of time. Stage one lasts from anywhere from one to five minutes. Stage two lasts anywhere from 10 to 60 minutes. Stage three lasts anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes. And then you have your REM sleep, your rapid eye movement. This is where dreams begin to come into fruition and things begin to happen. And this cycle lasts anywhere from 10 to 60 minutes. Now this can vary just depends on how your brain cycles through the things and how your body tends to do things. Not everybody is the same. And we've adapted over time to meet social needs and standards of sleep rather than what we really need for sleep. You should be sleeping long enough to cycle through all of these stages and you should truly avoid waking up in the middle of these stages. This is what can cause this fog, this reduction in posture, this lazy feeling, as well as waking up in the middle of rapid eye movement can cause sleep paralysis. Your body in this stage stops, goes limp. And when you wake up in it, you have no control over your body. Now, according to Zawarstein J, humans prior to the 1500s would split up their sleep into two cycles, one hour apart from each other. And then they would use this time to do things such as chores, procreate, stretch, and more. Our bodies evolved to sleep in intervals. This is why we get tired. This is why naps give us a power boost. That it allows us to continue through the day and it kind of resets the mind. Now this time in between your sleeping cycles could be used for any number of reasons. It could be used for whatever you want. You could wake up and write in your journal or anything. But I know everybody's been there. We've all been so exhausted and we've been so irritable that we feel like a hard pretzel. And if somebody would just pinch us, just grip us between their fingers, that we would snap. 
using this hour can allow you to relax and unwind the mind and reset things so that you can take in a new perspective. Now, unfortunately, trying to obtain this can be quite problematic in the society we live in. Being financially stable or wealthy can allow you to do this with zero to no risk. If you work a nighttime job, you might not be able to do this during the day. It might be more difficult. It can also be more difficult if you have a spouse or a child. But you should try this. I feel that it could do a lot of good in a lot of people's lives. And if you take this time, just one night, to try this and see how your body reacts, you might give it a second thought on how you should be sleeping. Thank you.